Kathy. She's been uh, working with Korean natural farming and uh, we're dealing more and more with uh, pathogens and pests on our cannabis uh, and on our vegetation with uh, environmental stresses that we're all feeling uh, from the external world. So um, I'd love for you, Wendy, to, to talk about some KNF practices that can help us specifically to pests and pathogens on our cannabis plants. So um, really the basis of a good pest management plan actually starts with scouting, which as I've integrated more and more with a lot of cultivators across the United States, I've realized that most people don't actually really know how to scout properly. One thing that we discovered was that even though we were scouting our cannabis plants pretty well, for the most part, we weren't scouting our companion plants. So the clover that you mentioned, while it is amazing and awesome, is also a wonderful banker for thrips. And those thrips will move from your clover up into the canopy of your cannabis. So all of a sudden I was like, we have thrips in our cannabis. Where did these come from? And I looked down at the clover and it was like covered. So learning how to scout properly, which means that you're going to different parts of your garden each time, ideally daily if you're going to really, you know, do it, but at least every week and check different plants. You want to check your top, your middle, inside and look at different areas. You want to get a really good scope that you can actually see things like russet mites because what happens with our pests is that in general we have outbreaks and at that point it becomes very, very hard to manage them. Um, so, you know, preventative is always best, but, you know, how do you make sure you manage an infestation before it really gets bad? Because preventing is not possible. Like we're talking about nature, right? Nature finds a way. So what we discovered this year is that um, it's actually, I, I mean, I, again, I think pretty much all of us could talk for like an hour on each of these. But so figure out how to scout, scout well, start there. Um, Korean natural farming really builds, there's, I've been talking a lot this weekend about an 80-20 principle. So if you do one thing and you do it well, it's gonna take care of 80% of your problems. And with Korean natural farming, what we've found is that the pest pressure is incredibly mitigated just on the basis of having a very fungally dominant soil. So using indigenous microorganisms, get your fungal dominance way up there, 10 to one, 30 to one, super high levels if you can and keep building it throughout the years and your press your pest pressure will be reduced more and more and more that being said we still do have bugs it's going to happen you know you're going to get a bad cut from somebody somebody's going to come over to visit your farm from their farm and you know they're going to look at a plant and bam you you got something so what we did was we reached out to a wide variety of people we had some hemp farmers in colorado um, i had some farmers up in washington and oregon uh, and myself, and we all started trialing out Jadam solutions, which is basically the son of KNF, and uh, found extremely high success rates. Someone I was talking to yesterday uses the same regiment that we did, and also said it was highly successful in like pretty much eradicating russet mites. Um, aphids on our farm, the only place that we had them really bad was the one little area that we weren't doing anything on, uh, which is a new field. So already our, you know, bacterial dominance is too high. We had huge pest pressures over there. Um, but we used Jadam sulfur solution, which you can make yourself cost pennies per gallon. It's extremely cheap. It's very effective because the way that it creates a wettable sulfur is not using a liming process, which is what they use with the industrial, industrial wettable powders, which make um, your pests create, can, can, can get resistant to the sulfur itself. So it ceases to be effective in long-term solutions. You use it, you can use it any time. We use it preventatively once a month. Um, we did have an outbreak of, um, what did we have this year? Yeah, we had some aphids, but those don't, they're not, they're really not that difficult to deal with. Um, if you're in a greenhouse, it's different, but if you're in a greenhouse, you can cover it and heat it up really well. Uh, for us, we, had a, we have a lot of natural beneficial predators that come in and kind of take care of the aphids for the most part. Uh, with the exception of the one new garden, which those plants were just weak. Uh, pests go to weak plants. They actually sense it. They'll send out signals. They'll, more bugs will come in. Um, so the Jadam sulfur is great to use preventatively, and it's great to use. You can use it every single day in the evening, an hour before sunset. You can, if, if anybody's interested, there's a book. It's a Jadam book. It's the orange one, and he takes you through. 
The only thing I will say with this is that he doesn't tell you anything about protective gear. So make sure you have a mask, respirator, glasses, the whole nine yards. Uh, Jadam wedding agent is another one. It's a soap. I use it for dish soap. We use it for hand soap. We use it as our wedding agent for our plants. Um, so you, if you do the Jadam sulfur, the JS, you do the Jadam wedding agent. And then if you incorporate JHS, Jadam herbal solution, which you can make out of a variety of things, the Jerusalem artichoke was highly effective. The ginkgo is highly effective. Apparently, oleander is highly effective. I'm not going to go there because oleander is really poisonous, and I don't really want that on my medicine. So, um, and we don't, I, I don't know. There's just something about it I don't want to do, <laughs> but you can try it. Um, and then we also kind of went outside the box, and we did a California Bay Laurel JHS, which was really effective as well. And uh, so basically the whole group of us, what we all came back with was that JWA and JS alone worked really well to mitigate pest pressures, adding JHS to that regimen as well, got almost complete eradication. And that was against russet mites, um, aphids, uh, spider mites. Oh, that's what we had with spider mites on my violas of all things. Um, and thrips somebody had in Washington I'm missing something. There's another pest that we all get that's tiny. Broad mites, thank you. Yes, and broad mites. And across the board, this trio of solutions was extremely effective and it's extremely cheap. You can make it all yourself. It's super easy and um, it's, it's awesome.